What's up, everybody? Welcome to my channel. Make sure you hit the bell. Make sure you share this video with people that you think it could help or that you think will like it. Yada, yada, yada. You know the drill. But I definitely want you to be a part of my little YouTube family. So welcome. Today we're going to talk about SP children and that is sensor perceiving children. Yes. So that would be ESTP, ESFP, ISTP, ISFP children. I don't know if you know any of them, but I've had the pleasure of meeting plenty of them. And in fact, recently I had a little five-year-old girl, you know, I was talking to her and I said, why can't you stay in your seat in class? Why are you constantly out of your seat? Because that's what her teacher says is an issue. Her mother feels that that's an issue. And she says, because it's just so boring to stay in my seat and not get up. And I just thought that was so funny. I mean, she said, it's just so boring not to get up every five minutes. I think if you don't have an eye for it, that's why if you if you have a kid and they seem hyperactive, you probably want to consult with somebody who has developed an eye for what ADHD looks like. Because there is a difference between an SP child and an ADHD child. And I know a lot of SP children have been misdiagnosed as having ADHD, and it's not that at all. There is a difference. However, it can kind of feel the same because when you have SP children, and this is not the case for all of them, some of them are very self-controlled and can sit still and can be very calm. Their S generates a calmness and a focus, you know? So there are some that do not fit in the hyper jelly bean category, but there are a lot of them that do, and they can be very misunderstood. They're gonna be getting up every two seconds. You're gonna be repeating the rules to them a 100 times. These are the rules, this is what you need to follow. We stay in our seat, we raise our hand. They're still going to be blurting out answers, yelling out things that other kids are doing. He's not using his crayons. He dropped his crayons on the floor, which is also extroversion in children. But yeah, they're not going to be, they're not rule. They're not, they're not confined by rules. Even as little children, you can see that. And that's not to say that some of them do not follow rules because some of them are can appear to be very rule oriented, but I'm talking about the group because it's a big group, right? America is 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 made up of many, many, many SPs. It's a huge group. So you're going to get the ones that can sit still, but you're going to get that big group of ones that are spontaneous. They're not thinking in terms of, okay, what is what am I supposed to be doing? It can almost appear as though they don't know the difference between school and home and what the difference is in how you behave. They just want action. They want adventure. They want to get up out of their seats. They want to talk. They want to converse. They want to have conversations with you. And it can be a very tricky thing. So I'm just saying, you know, be aware. They're probably going to be your little party group of kids. They're going to be you know, they're going to start the year off talking and they're going to end the year talking. Those kinds of kids, it's very difficult to get them to change who they are. But it can be difficult for a teacher because the kid just cannot sit still, can't stay focused, can't follow the rules. And the, the downside about it is you can have a very sweet SP kid that is constantly getting in trouble. Sit down. Stop doing that. Stop looking at their paper. Focus on your work. Do what you're supposed to be doing. They could be highly, highly intelligent and constantly getting in trouble because they're not following the rules. And now we have mask mandates as I'm speaking. And so, you know, because of COVID, 
So some of them are going to have difficulty keeping the mask on um, because it's just they don't want to be confined or restricted by that. So and they're going to forget that, oh, those are the rules. You know, they kind of want to do their own thing. But the fun, the, the good part about an SP child is they're going to be lots and lots of fun and very likable. You're just going to want to squeeze them like a little teddy bear because they're going to be so much fun. They get excited. They get a, a thrill out of things. Um, they're curious, naturally curious. They want to experiment. They want to take action. They want to enjoy their life. They see the, the you know, school room and it's like, oh my goodness, look at this. They also can be very go with the flow. So like, let's say you change directions really quick or you're like, okay, you guys, sorry, we're going to have to get up because we, we, we've got to go to the library now. They're not going to have a problem stopping and hey, all right, let's pivot. Whereas some of the other children are going to have difficulty with that. I'm not finished. I want to complete what I'm doing. You know, an SP child can adapt, you know, and they're giggly and funny and friendly and they're a lot of fun. But you have to be very, very careful because you don't want them to learn that they are bad people when it's not that they are bad because they're not following the rules. It's just it could be an area of difficulty for them. And so trying to figure out how to solve that. In a school setting, I'm going to be honest, that could be a huge challenge. Hey, speaking of fun, definitely check out my book, Flip the Script on Love. You might really enjoy reading it. Bye.